Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. Okay, in this video and the next three videos, we are going to focus on semantic segmentation of BRATS 2020 dataset. And BRATS stands for uh, Multimodal Brain Tumor Dataset Segmentation. Yeah, Brain Tumor Dataset Segmentation. That's what BRATS 2020 stands for. And again, many of you requested for this, so uh, I'm pretty sure the dataset itself is not, uh, is not unfamiliar to uh, many of you. For those who uh, do not know what I'm talking about, please watch this video to get a good understanding of what BRATS dataset is and what the plan is so you can decide whether you want to spend your time watching the next three videos I plan on recording on uh, this topic. So in this video, we are going to get a quick introduction of uh, what the dataset is and uh, how we plan on uh, achieving this task. Okay, in the next one, we are going to talk about getting the data ready because this data set, it's not just a bunch of TIFF files. Yeah, these are our NII files and we need to, and these are huge, right? These are 3D data sets. So we'll talk about getting the data set ready to be trained in the next video. And the one after that, let's focus on creating a custom uh, data generator because Keras data generator, you cannot use it to load files from disk. Obviously, I'm, I'm talking about loading files from disk training and then loading another batch and training, right? So you cannot use Keras Data Generator uh, unless you save your images into TIFF files. So if you want to use, uh, uh, load these NIIs and uh, save them as TIFF, that's another way of doing things, right? I mean, this is not the only way you can do things. The way I plan on doing this is chopping these large 3D volumes into smaller volumes, saving them on the disk, combining first of all all of the uh, all of the channels saving them onto the disk as a numpy array so i can read the numpy array that i have already preprocessed okay that's that's the plan and obviously the final video is going to be training and prediction so let's jump in to get a quick uh, understanding of the data set and also uh, the steps that we plan on following starting with the data set itself uh, the original link uh, uh, takes you somewhere else but i'm providing you this link where you can download uh, download uh, the data and here as you can see this is where i got my data set and this is 40 uh, gigabytes of data so not <laughs> definitely not enough uh, i mean not not small enough to fit in your in your uh, memory right i mean for your training pr uh, process so we have to find a way to load the data while we are training Okay, uh, let's move on uh, to the next step to understanding the data set itself. So these are multi-model scans and they are available as nifty or .nii files. Okay, this is very common, I guess, in this, uh, in this uh, MRI uh, world to work with these type of uh, image file formats. And there's a library, uh, and I'm going to talk about it next, uh, you know, in the next uh, video anyhow. So don't worry about exact uh, details yet, but let's get a good understanding at a high level. Okay, what do we mean by multimodal? Well, there are four channels of information from the same region. You have four channels of information, four different volumes of the same region. So when we say four channels of information, I have a given view taken in four different modalities. Okay, that's what uh, the information here is. And those are T1 is the label that they provided and T1 apparently it stands for native format. And then T1CE looks like some sort of a contrast enhanced or contrast weighted, okay, of T1 image. T2 is T2 weighted. Okay, again, that's their terminology and uh, flare is fluid attenuated inversion recovery volume. Again, if you don't know what these means, uh, obviously you're not coming from this field, that's okay. Treat these as four different channels. And on the right hand side, you can see the image. I did not print them out in the same order I have here, but look at the T1 image, okay? So this is the T1 image that looks a bit bright uh, in, this, in this image right here. And then T1 contrast uh, uh, weighted is right here. Okay, and uh, T2 is down here where you can see certain structures and T and flare is up here. And the reason why you have these four modalities is in each of these modalities, especially look at T1CE, flare, and T2, you get different types of information from uh, the same region. Okay, so when we get to handling the data, let's actually look at T1CE, Flare, and T2 and try to merge them into a single volume, into a single image. 
and, and ignore T1. You can use T1 if you want, but uh, why work with additional data if you know that, okay, the T1 has been contrast enhanced and you're getting much better information from here, right? So uh, that's why I'm not planning on using T1, but I plan on using one, two, and three, these three. And here is the mask showing you uh, four different, uh, let's just, uh, uh, they have been segmented manually, okay? And uh, not just segmented manually by people people like me, you know, just uh, uh, painting the pixels. They're approved by experienced neuroradiologists. So there is some level of confidence in terms of the, the masks. And the four annotations, first of all, bulk of the volume is unlabeled. So this is unlabeled volume. So even the outside, obviously the dark area is unlabeled, but even within the actual volume, the, where you see the brain right here, bulk of this is unlabeled because apparently there is nothing different, nothing anomaly, nothing useful in that region. So that's label zero. Label one, two, three, uh, and four have real information and label three is missing. There is no label three. So in this image, you have label zero, label one, label two, and label four. That's it. Okay, there is no three. Obviously, that means we have to reassign four to three. Yeah, there is no, I don't know why three is missing, frankly. I have no clue why three is missing. Okay, but this is the information we have until now. Okay, now let's move on to our approach. Our approach here is first of all, we want to get the data ready, which is going to be the next video. And then we are going to define the custom ge data generator. I already mentioned that, uh, which is going to be the video after that. And then I combine these two, define the 3D unit and train and predict into one, uh, one video. Okay. So uh, just to elaborate on getting the data ready, what do I mean by getting the data ready? Well, first of all, we'll download the data set and unzip it. Yeah because it's in .gz format, so it's like compressed. Think of it as a zip. If you don't know how to unzip it, use WinRAR, W-I-N-R-A-R, -R, right? I mean, it can you can use that to unzip all the NII files. You can do that using Python, but if you can do it outside of it and, you know, simple tasks, then why not? Uh, because you're doing it only once. If you're doing that many, many, many times on thousands of images, it makes sense to automate using Python. Otherwise, it's a waste of your time writing, uh, you know, lines of code for unzipping it. Okay, uh, once you do that, then uh, the segmented one thing you need to correct is, I don't know why this happened, in their data set, when I was looking at total number of masks and total number of images, I was always getting one less mask compared to the images. That drove me crazy. And eventually I realized that the folder number 355, the segmented file name has a weird name. So we will be renaming it to match the others. That's a little thing, but these are the things that you need to pay attention to if you don't want to go crazy. Um, to handle the NII files, you need to install the NIBABEL library. I think I'm saying it right, but uh, it's just uh, it's just uh, go to PyPy and then search for uh, or pip install. I mean, we'll look at this when we get there, but just giving you a uh, you know heads up. Okay, now when you unzip it, when you unzip this this folder that you download, you're going to see <coughs> excuse me, you're going to see 371 uh, subdirectories. Okay, and uh, with names uh, Bratz 20 training 001, 002, all the way up to 371. In each of these folders, you have five different NII images, and they're appropriately named as Flare, Seg, T1, T1CE, and T2. And Seg stands for the segmented image. And as you can see, the name here is common between all of these images. And I'm going to use that name to search for specific files and segmented file and then match them up. This is where I say when I searched for that, I got 371 uh, images, but then only 370 segmented masks because I was searching for a specific name. And in uh, 355 folder, it was something different. So go ahead and rename that seg file in the folder, uh, you know, uh, in 355 to match this then you're all set, okay? You can ignore that if you want. I mean, that's 355 as part of, but data is very important in our case, right? So why ignore if we can use it just by renaming? Okay, so uh, now the next thing is, okay, we have all the folders ready. We need to load the images and scale all the volumes using MinMax Scaler because 
I believe these are all 16-bit uh, images, like the data point goes from uh, 0 not to 256, but 2 to the power of 16, I believe. But then the maximum uh, gray level completely changes between these different images. To bring everything to the same level, you have to scale the volumes. So I recommend using min-max scaler. And then I am going to combine the three non-native volumes, which is T2, T1, C, E, and Flare. These are the ones where we have real information. I'm going to combine them into a single TIFF or a single, uh, let's say, volume. Let's not say TIFF. You can save them as TIFF uh, using TIFF file library, but I'm going to pre-process these data and then save them as NumPy arrays. So instead of TIFF for uh, JPEGs, right, I mean, we can directly load the NumPy arrays, okay? Again, if things don't make sense, keep watching these series, like the next three videos, and uh, hopefully uh, they do make sense eventually. Okay, so I'm gonna combine these three channels or bands into a single multi-channel volume or multi-band volume, okay? That makes it easy for us to load them in chunks, okay? And reassign pixels of value four to a value three because three is missing. And when I try to do intersection over union or uh, categorical, uh, all of these, it's it's going to look for zero, one, two, three, four, and, and three is missing. And so it makes sense for us to reassign the pixel values. So that's what we're gonna do there. And then crop the volume, each of these volumes, to remove useless blank regions. Again, this is something I chose to do because why? Most of the region is empty. When I was training initially with all these volumes, all these volumes, it was taking a lot of time. But then it was biased towards not segmenting anything because most of the volume is unlabeled, meaning it's got a pixel value of zero. Why waste our computing time and why also make our model biased towards something that's not there? So I'm going to remove useless regions or blank regions around the actual volume of interest, right? So, and then only use the actual volumes of interest. So we are going to crop them into smaller chunks that we can handle like 128 by 128 by 128 volume and, and keep only the ones that has enough information and drop all the ones that do not have any information, okay? So that's uh, the at step. And uh, I just like I mentioned, crop uh, drop all the volumes where the amount of annotated data is less than certain percent. I can say, okay, if that annotated data, uh, if that volume has less than 1% of annotated, then it has pr practically nothing, right? So it's useless, so drop it and save all these useful uh, volumes to a local drive as NumPy array because we're doing a lot of operations here. So why save them again as images? And then so let's just save them as NumPy arrays because we are already scaling them. So they're ready. The NumPy arrays are ready to be uh, trained upon later on. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to do exactly the same with my mask volumes. And then divide these into train and validation data sets. So you're all set to get started. Okay. And in step two, we are going to define a custom data generator. Like I already mentioned, Keras image data generator only works with uh, 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 most common recognizable image formats like JPEG, PNG, and TIFFs. And it will not recognize the NPY files that we're going to save that are nothing but NumPy arrays. Okay. And it will also not recognize if you save these as uh, TIFF images, but multi-channel TIFF. Maybe it'll recognize up to three channels, but if you have four channels, then it will not recognize. Uh, I tried it, maybe I made a mistake, but if someone knows a better way to handle this, please let others know in the comments. Um, We'll define a custom generator and of course defining the 3D unit model is probably the easiest step. What I did, I mean you can use any of the existing 3D uh, unit models out uh, you know in segment uh, segmentation models library for example. You can use that. What I did is something very simple. I have my 2D unit from the mitochondria data set right or the previous data set that we have uh, worked with in 2D. I just took that and extended that to 3D. That's it. I just, if, if the kernel size is, I don't know, three by three, I change that to three by three by three. Okay, I'll, sh I'll show you uh, later on when we get there what I did. Or like I said, you can copy the code from anywhere if you find 3D unit or use the 3D segmentation models library. That also works fine. Basically the point here is be ready with a 3D unit model, okay? And step four is train and predict. So train by loading the images in uh, batches, of course, uh, using our custom generator that we just defined and uh, predict and plot the data for visualization. 
So this is the plan. And again, you probably now started to realize why I'm breaking this down into multiple videos because I guess it's almost 15 minutes now and we just talked about getting ready. Okay, now in the next video, let's go ahead and jump into getting the data actually ready by jumping into the Python code. Okay, so I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Again, please subscribe so you know exactly when that, that video gets uploaded. Okay, thank you guys.